Hey guys, Michael here with Beyond the Cut Creations. Um, we had a request on somebody needed some help with some stacked geometry. So we're going to go ahead and do a little quick uh, rundown of how we do this within Carbide Create at the very moment. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make this rectangle about the size of our, um, our workpiece here. We'll call it 24 by, I think it's 5. Should be pretty close. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and start with some simple text. Just going to go ahead and do a common name, Johnson. All right, we're going to go ahead and make this four inches tall. We want that to be centered inside there, so we're just going to go ahead and select. Go over here to center. It's aligned the stock, so there we go. Um, now we're going to do a quick uh, stack geometry. Let's see. So we'll do an establish. One, two, three, four spaces, 2019, for example. We're going to go ahead and make that one inch tall. So, now this placement, this is pretty much up to the up to the user. It's all in the eye of the beholder. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and center it left and right and just move it up and down as you, as you wish. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and quick make a copy of just this established 2019 since that's what's going to be stacked so we're going to go ahead and copy that one second here. control control C for copy um, so we do that now we need to go ahead and make this all as like one one unit so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the offset we're going to offset to the outside doesn't need to be by very much so we're only going to do a thousandth 0.001 inches and that's done so if you go ahead and click on that and move that around um, you can see that it's all one piece some of the parts were cut out um, you can come in here we're gonna remove basically everything that's on the inside because what this is gonna do is gonna allow us to profile the back pocket so that all of these are raised up and then we're gonna come in later on with our copied vector and pocket a, a operation on top of that and just leave uh, the stack geometry so now we can go ahead and get rid of this guy right here we're gonna get rid of that we're gonna select our vector that we just went ahead and offset uh, one second let's get rid of that little guy right there all right so that's what we offset so we're going to go ahead and select everything. We want to group this to make things easy on us. And so that way we can position it. So we're going to go ahead and align this back to where the original was. Now very carefully, since there's not any nodes, unfortunately, on this established. It would be nice if there was nodes on the, the text, but there's not at the moment. Hopefully in the future. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drag this guy close as we can. Now remember it is offset a little bit so the sizes are a little bit different. If you wanted to go ahead and make it perfect you could but for our purposes it's really not going to make a difference. Um, so as you can see we have that stack to look like looks like everything is, is as one now. So we're going to go ahead and select the original. As you can see all the stuff on the inside of letters is not highlighted so we're going to go ahead and pocket around all these letters and leaving this stuff in here solid. We're going to go over here to go to toolpath. I have a 1 8 inch end mill selected. I'm not going to change it just for um, just for purposes. I don't want to have to go back and forth. Maybe we didn't have we had a clearance issue. So just to make things easy, we're just going to go ahead and, and leave it at that. I'm going to change the speeds up just a little bit so that way we don't have forever on the rendering. All right, so we're going to leave that at a half inch depth and we do the simulation and this is what we're left with. Now this skin on the outside, now if you guys want to go ahead and get rid of that off your simulation, which you can go ahead and do, come back over here to design, select that, the, that rectangle, the box that you drew around it and make it, you can make it as small as an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. We'll just go ahead and do a quarter of an inch bigger. You click apply and it automatically offsets around the that that perimeter. 
So we're going to come back over here to go to the Toolpath Shell Simulation. And now you can see that scanner all the way around there is gone. So now what we want to do is we want to come back in here and we want to etch out this established 2019 and make it look all as one unit. So we come back over here to design. We're going to go ahead and select our text on the inside. As you notice, we grouped it before, so that's all pretty easy for us. And we're going to select the outside box once more. Come back over here to Toolpath. We're going to do a contour toolpath. We're going to set this at, say, just an eighth of an inch deep. Well, you know what? We'll go ahead and make it a quarter inch. Two five. So we're going to go ahead and do this another pocket operation. Once again, I'm just going to speed these speeds up. Do your own feeds and speeds. Don't pay attention to mine. To each his own as far as that goes. So as you can see now we have the stack geometry. Everything on the background is left clean. Now this can be done with with any um, with any drawing two vectors you can stack them. Now to just to show you a quick thing, if we were to go ahead and run this as a quarter inch end mill, go ahead and see the difference what happens. Show you the simulation. As you can see, some of the detail was left out. Now, without adaptive clearing, it's just I just find it easier to go ahead and run with the smallest bit that you're gonna have to use anyways. Otherwise, you can come back in here, select only the text and do a outside right toolpath if you needed to clean up the letters. Make sure your depth is, is set to the last pocketing operation. As far as that goes, that's a way to save up time. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that, hope that helps. Hope everybody gains something at least out of this. Like I said, we come back in here, we change that guy back to a quarter inch or eighth of an inch end mill, pocket it. And then we get back to that. Now these feeds, these speeds, this time right here, but mumbo jumbo, um, that's exactly why I don't use stock feeds and speeds. Because I'm not gonna take a full day to cut this out. All right. Thanks, guys. Sorry about the end there.